Um, ultimately, you know, some of the records sold well, others didn't, you know, our margin was pretty minimal because we were using our distributor to, you know, and so they took most of that money. So we were, you know, mostly covering the costs, our costs. Um, and then when a record wouldn't sell, you know, it would be, we'd be the one sort of like, you know, out, out of pocket in a, in a real sense in terms of, um, you know, all that manufacturing um, costs. So um, ultimately it didn't make things better and um and then it got to a point i can you know not immediately but after a few years and like certainly the early 2000s where you ben was like we don't we know we don't want to do this anymore we want to sell the label um and my my thought then was well the best you know the best way to sort of like keep the family together is for you know for lookout to try to buy it and so that was like an you know kind of upping the stakes financially even more to sort of, you know, I felt like we were, you know, kind of having to prove our love and value um, and ultimately didn't get anything out of it. You know, we, we ended up kind of like, um, you know, just uh, we completed the sale, but it really decimated any kind of cash reserves that we had to do that. Um, and then, you know, I don't even know exactly what the reason was, you know, if it was just like, a late payment or something like that, but ultimately they just decided to pull their records anyway, and they had every right to do that. Um, the Screeching Weasel did, you know, all the the lookout catalog. So, um, yeah, it just it was it was just you know that's one thing I would I would I would do differently if someone like you know it's like a breakup if someone like is not happy, um, you got to let them go. <laughs> you got to let them go. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, gosh, you know. I think that there's a lot of different things that people could point to as to what was maybe like the, the biggest catalyst as to like the, the quote unquote downfall of lookout records. Like some, some people like, you know, say, well, you know, once green day and operation Ivy pulled their stuff, like, you know, obviously that was like a huge cash surplus that was just now gone. Right. Yeah. And I mean, how, how do you have like any kind of other bands that you can point to that are even comparative, you know, in terms of like the number of numbers, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that, I think that that's, you know, it's really, I mean, it's really accurate. I mean, I, I, um, you know, I appreciate Larry's, um, you know, faith in me to kind of like lead the, you know, kind of like a, a new era, but I, I, you know, I don't think I was very well equipped for that, you know, from a, um, a, a business, a real kind of deep understanding of like the, you know, what we needed as a business and how, you know, I mean, really, I think his interest in moving on had a lot to do with the fact that like the, that wave of like the early mid nineties had sort of plateaued, you know, so we weren't growing anymore. And in fact, you know, we started the beginning of a decline and that decline became, you know, more, more steep despite some really, you know, doing some really great things. 